Okay, I apologize for those viewing the recording of this. I forgot for the first 20 minutes or so to record. So, yeah, hopefully you can get up to speed. Um, yeah, so we were just talking about uh, filling this in, filling in a face, and then I'm going to save it off as a I just and then pull it back in. Could you go back to that surface film? Yeah. Your, yeah. So, edit this feature. Yeah. One of the options now should be merge and create a... Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah merge is all. Create, create a solid. solid. Well, that's going to be check, even better. I always check fix up laundry. Oh, that does. oh yeah, if if there's a gap, it will try to fill in that gap. It if you have like a wide gap, if you have like a C shape, it'll like blow like out this huge area. But um, I always check that for whatever reason. It seems to help. Yeah, sometimes you get like a real small gap in there that it thinks it can't fill. So this is that, probably going to take. A lot of times makes it a solid then if that's all you got right. Yeah, that's that's a very good point. Yep. And then here too, I could have selected tangency uh, constraints on all the edges if I wanted to be super technical. Um, I'm probably not going to be using this face for anything though, so I just want it to be a, a clean, solid body. This laptop doesn't have quite the horsepower of my normal workstation so I apologize for any delays um, yeah so do you guys find yourselves making these sorts of edits oh it appears to not be legit I don't know it doesn't want to merge it so yeah I guess in that case you can knit and then try to create a solid with them too See if it can do that. So, there we've got a solid body now. So, now if your model came in without any of those faces, like that one's gone and that one's gone and that one's gone, you're going to be spending a lot of time doing that. But, yeah, usually it's not all of them for us, it's a couple here and there. So, you're saying if you open a file like this, this is fix it. Yes. Okay, yeah, so. You, you already have fixed it. Why do you have to go through the save and reopen? Yeah, so the reason that I go through the save and reopen process, saving it off as an IGES and bringing it back in, would be if I couldn't get it to a solid body like this um, in, in the part file. If, if NIT would have failed, then it would have been two separate bodies yet. Um, if I save it as an IGIS and bring it back in, when you open up an IGIS, it'll knit faces together. So, as long as the faces are close enough, it'll, it'll merge them. So like these two faces, for instance, that are actually touching, it's for sure going to bring them together. So I want to save this as an IGES. Selected faces, because I only want those two faces. If you did the whole, if you just did all bodies, it would be the same way, but if I did all bodies, it's just going to bring in the solid body back in. So selected faces, and then open that IGES. These are one, one surface. Whereas if I had done this as a parasolid or a step, it would come in as two separate surfaces. What's that? Oh, I, I only selected the two faces because just, just as an example. If I was trying to, to heal the whole part, I would have done the whole part and brought it back in. And then it would be a solid body again. I'm just demonstrating that I just knits things together. It, yes, there are two faces. 
it, th there are still two faces, but it's one surface. So if you if I had selected a hundred surfaces, if I had selected you know all of these surfaces because I want to make a feature that extrudes up to that in in a nest part, I would either I could offset them in the part and then save them as a parasolid or a step, but I could also just save them as an I just. Yes. Yes, in this case, I, I wouldn't I necessarily feel the need to do it. Right. Okay. Yep. And to be honest, I probably would have done I just first because I know it's going to work. Whereas knit may or may not work. I just, yeah, I just almost oh. always works. It will even, like these two faces that aren't touching, if I save these off as an I just, I'm guessing it's still going to knit those two together because the gap is small enough that that it's going to bring them together. So if you have something that won't knit because the gap is too big, try and save it off as an IGIS and bring it back in. Oh, I saved that as a part, shoot. I want IGIS. So, I rarely use the knit command because I'll just save it as an I just bring it back in because that's always going to knit it together. So again, just these two faces, just for an example, I'm um, just going to open up that I just. So you can see it's one body now. Now you can also see it kind of created some crappiness in that corner. So that's why one of the reasons I don't like IGIS as my primary file type because it does some of this action if there are small <coughs> gaps. It'll try to bring them together and make some weird geometry that's going to cause you problems down the road. But if I had selected that, that radius in there, then it would have all been fine because it wouldn't have tried to do any knitting. So I could probably extrude up to it, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to fill at that edge. So yeah, um, yeah, we could try it. But yeah, especially if like this edge touches a clean edge or another junky edge, that fillet is going to be a mess. So, yeah, I think it would let me extrude, but yeah. All right. Um, and then, yeah, missing bodies, completely missing bodies out of the out of the file, or if there's just general crappiness to the file, like there's faces going off into space. I try to go back to the original files, you know, just try to open it a different way. You know, we, we've got Transmagic as an option at Copes. Um, if you have Inventor, if you have some other means of opening that, that file, um, try that and then export it as a different file type and yeah, yep, using different formats. So a lot of it is just kind of poking at it until you see what sticks. Um, if you see these surfaces going to space, do you consider them corrupted files? Do you even attempt to like, cut them or <coughs> shave, shave that portion that goes off? So we, we do, um, if, if, the, if my tactic of going back to original files doesn't work and we're kind of stuck with what we've got, <coughs> um, yeah, I will try to delete that face mm -hmm. Like if I can select that face that's odd, yeah, it'll be like a, a face that you can't even see a lot of times, but you can select it by just clicking in space. And at that point, try to delete that face and hope for the best. Usually it's a 50-50 shot at best. But um, yeah, doing, mm -hmm. yeah, trying whatever I can to get rid of that, that junk that's in the file. 
probably should have brought an example of that. But I didn't. So, sorry. <laughs> um, do you guys have that same experience? Any other suggestions for how to deal with general file crappiness? By, de by delete, you mean delete yeah. the face? Yeah. yeah. I know. Yep. Yeah, we, we consider the customer geometry to be somewhat sacred. Like, mm -hmm. like even that corner that I rounded off, like I'm hesitant to do that sometimes where mm -hmm. if I'm going to use that corner in my nest, it's like, well, eh. You're but. trying to design a mold around it, you don't want to. So. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. All right, um, I'm going to get into a little bit of designing tooling to the surface data. That's what we do the most of at COPES. Um, so I want to make a couple key points at the beginning here. Um, the biggest thing that I push with my mechanical engineers is know what you want to design before you begin when you're doing stuff with surfaces. Because what your final what you want your final geometry to look like really, really, really drives what surfaces you need to put in your final part, how you want those surfaces to to be. Because if I have a part like, let me go that open earlier. If I have a part like this that I need to nest, I'm not gonna just bring this part into m the part that I'm gonna nest this part with. Like, I'm not going to bring in this solid body. For one, it's got all these holes in it that aren't going to let me extrude up to it. For two, I don't even want to extrude up to it because that's going to be a super, super complex thing for our machining group to try to machine out a nest that fits every form and contour of that. So I have to make a decision of what I want my nest. By nest, I mean a part that's going to hold this part it's going to fixture that part in a reputable location so that we can do something with that part. What do I want that part to look like? I need to decide that before, before I really even touch SolidWorks. Because otherwise, you're just going to go down rabbit trails. Do they tell you up front where they want you checking and you know, what makes it true? Yep. So sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Um, this one has a two-way and a four-way locator on it. So they don't, haven't necessarily told me that these are a two-way and a four-way locator, but they're kind of obvious because it's a round hole and a slot. So I'm assuming that that's what they want us to use. Sometimes we'll get a piece like this that does not have a two-way and four-way, and so at that point it's like, well, I gotta just kind of go off from some of these perimeter features to locate it. Um, we ask the customer if they have a preference, you know, how they want us to locate the part to, to actually get a true position. But often our customer doesn't even know. Because our customer, let's say this is for a, for a Chevy Cruze. GM isn't our customer. Our customer is, um, is Modus or Visteon or um, Yang Feng or, you know, one of the automotive suppliers. So they may not even know what the datums are. Um, Quite often they do, but occasionally they don't. Sometimes the parts don't even have datums. I've got another part that we'll probably show later that it doesn't even have datums. It's, it's just this piece of um, uh, <coughs> foam that just needs to get put on a headliner. And so it's just perimeter is all that matters. Do you get any G and T prints that would tell you where that is? Usually not. Okay. Yeah. So, sometimes. Sometimes we do, yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of times you're lucky and you find perpendicular, perpendicular surfaces to each other. Exactly. exactly. A part like this, if it didn't have the two-way and the four-way, I mean, there's no planar surfaces. So it, it, would be, it would probably be us you know, going around one of these bosses as a four-way and another one of the bosses as a two-way and, and making that work. In this part, for instance, I, I mean, I've got a couple of different options that I could take. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. So with my nest, let me. Uh, 
just going to draw here. I'm pretty sure that I want to have net surfaces to the part on these flanges here because I know that that's where the part is contacting. This part goes on, a, on an automotive headliner, on the back side of a headliner. And I know that the part is getting glued to the headliner basically on this lower flange. So I want to provide support to that flange. So I know that. Um, another thing I have to decide up front is, is my part going to look like this? Or more likely, is my part going to look like this? So I need to know what my base plane of my part is um, so that I can know what surfaces I need to bring in, how far I need to extend them out, all of that. So the other thing that I need to figure out is what do I want to do with these areas where there's all these bosses? Um, I want to do something there. I don't, I could just have clearance cuts in there, you know, just do that kind of action. But that doesn't provide a whole lot of support to the part. So I'm thinking that I probably want to provide some support in these areas. So I want to do something like this and then support that top, the top of that flange too, or not flange, the top of that boss. So I'm thinking that that's kind of sort of the direction that I want to go with the part. And so, so I feel pretty good about that. Where was I on my PowerPoint? All right, so yeah, the final part geometry that you want drives what surfaces that, that you're going to need to bring into your final part. I also stress to my guys, do most of your surface work outside of your final part. So I'm gonna jump ahead a second and show you my final part. <clears throat> And we're going to see that there's not much surface work inside this part. I have one surface import, two surface imports, three surface imports. That's all the surfaces I have in my final part. Now, I had to do a lot of work to get those three surfaces, but I, I don't like them having, I don't like having them in my final part because I don't like having all that work in my final part because there's just so many features it clutters up your tree and it, it is way more likely to explode on you um, just because of a rebuild or something like that. You're gonna get a rebuild error. And when it does rebuild, it's gonna take way, way longer to rebuild, where this part doesn't take much time to load or rebuild at all, because it's just, it's just three dumb imported surfaces to get there. And then the last thing, um, knowing what level of criticality is needed. Uh, so I just kind of talked through on this particular part, you know, I know that I need to support this face and this face. I think I want to support this face. I say, can faces be cheated to be more machinable? You know, if you've got a face that's at a 0.1 degree angle, I usually just assume that that can be vertical and call it good. We don't deal a ton with things that are that critical. That, that I can't just cheat in a vertical face to make it more machinable. So just thinking about how the part is going to be made and making it easy for, for our machining group is something that I stress with, with my guys as well. Can you explain, uh, you talk about doing uh, most of your surface work outside of your final part. Yep. Explain that or when you do that. Or yep, I would love to. Okay, so if I've got this piece here, I know I need these faces in my final part. Oh, I should maybe take a step back too. The way that Copes designs anything that interacts with a customer part, we take an approach that we call in-car, which means that this, this piece here, its origin is right, right there because it's a, 
it's a car part so the origin is at the front bumper or at the ground you know it's all of that um so this piece that i'm nesting the part with also has the origin at that same location so some places design a part where the origin of this part would have been you know dead center on the part there's advantages to that but we see the advantages of having the origins be the same as outweighing the advantages on this type of part having the origin at the center all of our normal parts that are just like a rectangular solid or whatever those are all going to have their origin at the center of the part so that said when i bring in this surface it's already in position when i bring this surface into into my nest it's in position when i bring this surface in it's in position so i'll go back to this part and say okay i know i need these faces i know i need to support these faces <coughs> so i'm not going to select all of these right now i have done that already and they are let me just open up that file <coughs> Pick piece flange. So you've selected them and you saved as an IGES file. Yeah. Yep. Selected all the pieces of the flange and then saved it as an IGES. So that's what I'm opening right now. So yeah. This is what I would start my my nest component with. And then I know I need a plane that's kind of sorta in this general area. So sometimes I'll just draw a sketch on, so in this case it'd be plane two. I'm gonna draw a sketch to figure out what angle I need. In this case I know it's 35 degrees. So I'm gonna take that and take plane one and three, make an axis, take plane one and my axis, make a plane off from that at 35 degrees. And we need to flip that. And then I need to offset that plane. I think it was 45 and a half. No, that's not right. Shoot. How far do I have to be off? 145. So this will be the start of the start of my part, and I'll take this this plane start a sketch and then draw the outline that I want to extrude to meet that flange <clears throat> I could probably attempt to close this area but I'm not going to I I would just take and just draw a closed sketch that only is going to extrude up to these faces which we'll be able to see here. So you can see I did the surface import, the access to plane the plane. And now I have a boss extrude. Ignore the minus sign there. That should be fully constrained in a proper part. But this is just an example, and I didn't feel like dimensioning all those sketch points. So, um, so yeah, you can see the sketch there that is going to touch off on that flange. <coughs> Did that answer your question or not? I, I feel like I went a, almost a different direction. I forget what your question was originally. Where, where, where do you say do most of your surface work outside? Ah, yeah, yeah. And prepare that surface for them cutting to or extruding to or whatever. Yup, yup, okay. So my next, the next thing I have to do involves more surface work than, than just exporting some bodies. So I need to take the if center you, section. You step back. Yep. If that surface you exported had failures, you would fix them or fill in holes. And stuff yes. Like that. Yes, that's very true. Or, or for instance, if I knew that this needed to extend out past my perimeter here. Obviously, I can't extrude up to it unless the surface itself extends out past the perimeter. So I would take these and I would 
do my extend surface, do all of this work outside of my final part. I would not do so do this. Here, yes. If I did it here, I would I would take and save this off as an IGIS and then bring it back in by doing a edit feature and pulling in that IGIS to be that surface again. If that makes sense. Okay. So it, if I knew I needed to extend out these faces, um, Let's just assume I want in this area to have something bump out here. So I don't want to have this surface extend. This one's not so bad because it's just one feature, but imagine I had, had to do all around the edges. It's likely to fail on me after, after a rebuild. So what I want to do is take that surface body, save it off as an IGIS, and I, I'm saving it as an IGIS. I would normally save it as like a parasolid, but I'm doing it as an IGIS because there was a, a small gap in that. You saw a blue line in there, which I'll show again in just a second. So I know I want that. I want to close this gap. This, this blue line here indicates that there's a gap. So if I want to bump out there, it's not going to be able to solve unless that's somehow knitted together. So I'm going to take this and edit that feature and bring this one in to replace it, the one that I just saved off. Now obviously my extent doesn't work anymore, but I can just delete that now. And we see. You can actually replace surfaces by doing the edit on the first surface. Yep. So now I can take edit this sketch you know, make a make a bump out in that area, fully constrain it because that's good practice, and then, boom, that's yeah. So now I don't have any surface work in my part anymore. So a small example, but I like to have just bring in the surface you need and work with it. It's less parametric. I understand that. You know, if if I find that. Oh, I need this to go out two inches. Okay, I gotta do that over again. But if you put a lot of thought into your part before you started designing it and you kinda know what you need, that parametric nature of, oh, I just wanna double click on my extend surface and make it two inches more, uh, kinda goes away. It, it's not worth the hassle of things exploding on you. So that's what I preach to my guys. Do your surface work outside of the part. What do you find? I typically say, start with, okay, I got a block stock size 2 by 6 by 24, and I tend to do cuts to surface. Do you find mm. cuts to surface, or you're extending to a yep. surface? Is there any benefits, or does it really matter? When <coughs> That's a great question. Um, I find that cuts with surface are more likely to solve. Like, I'll find that the extrude to surface doesn't always solve when I can extrude and then sometimes get a cut to work, but I kind of like the cleanliness of only one thing in the tree. So I kind of favor extrude to surface if it'll work. Um, I do a lot of cuts with surface though, so I don't know that one's better than the other. And I just realized I've been neglecting my treats here. <laughs> So if you want to have an assembly of the third parts or something like that, you would create a part in that and then start creating your surfaces from your multiple components in that part and then you would save that off as your common surface. There's Sometimes, yeah. If if I need to make a single... Heads up. Oh, thank you. If I need to make a single part that interfaces with multiple customer parts, then, then I would do that. If, if for instance, you know, this is the only customer part that this part that this nest is touching, I don't necessarily need to save the the other piece of of hick that's right next to this. I don't need those as a single part. Right. So, we typically will break up our customer parts into assemblies where mm -hmm. it makes sense, but. 
yeah, it's okay. pretty rare that we are interfacing with multiple customer parts in a single part, if that makes sense. <laughs> okay, yep. Oh yeah, something like or like something with like a circuit board that's got a bunch right. of parts to it. Yeah, we will save that off as a single part. Okay. Yep. And boy, I think we're close to our time limit. Um, I got four more treats to hand out. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> Snickers or Reese's? Who else interacted? <laughs> no. All right. Here we go. All right, this one's going out random. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, so that's as far as we got in my presentation here. Uh, thank you guys for coming, and yeah, if you have any questions afterwards, feel free to talk to me or send me an email. So, thank you all. And I got two more treats. Come on up. Don't forget to stop your record. Yeah, thanks.